is bigger, better? My name is Jocelyn, I'm from Breaker Stereo and Performance, and in this video, we'll be going over Pioneer's new DMH WT7600 NEX, which is a nine inch floating panel digital multimedia receiver. Now there is a DMH WT8600, which is essentially the same radio, except for the screen size. The 8600 is a 10.1 versus this, which is a nine inch. Now, if you're not familiar with floating panel receivers, these are head units that fit into a single or double din opening, and the display attaches to the front of the radio, allowing for a much bigger screen. Now, to just Additionally, double din radios will max out to about 7 inches because of their physical limitations. But with the floating screen design, that limitation is not there. So manufacturers are pushing the boundaries on the screen size for these radios. These radios can totally change the landscape of your dash, giving you the floating tablet effect. Similar to what you would see on BMWs, Mercedes, Audis, and other high-end vehicles. So if you're looking to change up the look of your dash while getting some up-to-date features, you're gonna want to stick around for this video. So as you can imagine, this radio is loaded with features like Apple CarPlay, wired and wireless, Android Auto, wired and wireless, a capacitive 1280 by 720 HD touchscreen display, music playback through the USB, built-in Bluetooth for calling and music streaming, built-in HD radio, built-in Amazon Alexa, internet browsing, and a few more. So hang with me as we break this radio down. First we'll do an unboxing, then we'll go over the connections behind the radio, and then I'll show you the mounting options. We'll also fire this thing up and I'll show you how to set up the AV car assist and internet browsing as well. And then finally we'll go through all the functions on this radio. At the end of this video we'll go through our pros and cons list and then we'll give you our overall rating. Now this head unit is available on our website, just click the link in the description below and that'll take you directly to the product page. Okay, let's get to the unboxing. Oh, but before we do that, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe as well. Alright, so you have your remote control, GBS antenna, Bluetooth mic, main harness, USB-C extension, mounting bracket, hardware, and then your RCA inputs, camera inputs, and then you also get a USB-C to USB adapter. And then you have all your manuals, registration cards. And this is a DIN size opening. So this is the main unit or the brain. The monitor plugs into here. In the back of the radio, this is the screen. All right, so on to the back of the radio. Okay, so this cable is for your XM Sirius. So you need the SXV300. Uh, this is your wired remote. So if you have steering wheel controls, you will need another adapter in order for those to work, but that's gonna plug into there. You have your GPS antenna, microphone for your Bluetooth. Uh, this is for your iData link. That's your USB-C main harness. And this is the RCA harness. So your camera inputs go here and also your RCA pre-outs. And then of course your AM FM antenna plug-in. And then finally your mini HDMI cable. So this radio has multiple mounting options. In fact, this has the most mounting options available in the floating display category. So we'll go over a few right now. The first is back and forth. So in order to adjust it, there's two screws on the top and also two screws on the bottom. I've already released the other three screws. I'm just gonna take this one off. Okay, and then you can move this forward and this will give you in this position, it comes out about 20 millimeters, okay? And then you would put your screws back in. So I'm gonna set that back. There are five up and down patterns that can be adjusted by moving the panel along the bracket. And each setting is separated by 15 millimeters. So there's also a left and right option, which is unique to this radio. So you can have it center, or you can either go 30 millimeters to the left or 30 millimeters to the right. Then you can freely adjust the angle of the monitor, either 60 degrees forward or 15 degrees back. All right, so let's go through some of the settings on this radio. So let's start with favorites, okay? Because I think this is an underrated feature that this radio has. So what you can do here is you can list your favorite menu settings. So let's say for instance, you wanted to be able to get to the equalizer fairly easy. So here you would go under sound and then select graphic EQ. And you see there's a star there and all you would have to do is just touch the star. Now it's highlighted so that you're able to get to the graphic equalizer quickly. Um, let's say you wanted to also be able to get to uh, the Bluetooth settings quickly. So then you would just hit that star and that's going to highlight that there. And then now, as you can see, if we go to favorites, we have the graphic EQ listed and also the BT settings listed. So this eliminates the need to go into the actual menu um, here and then scroll and then get to there. So you can easily just hit favorites and it goes right to the equalizer. Okay, so that's a great feature. All right, so moving on, let's go ahead and take a look at the system settings here. So you have your AV source settings, 
beep on or off. You have your Amazon Alexa settings, input output settings. Okay, so we can select this. AV input, second camera or off. Auxiliary in, on or off. Okay, demo mode. Let's just turn that off. Language, clock settings, dimmer, picture adjustment, and then system information. So here you can see what firmware you're running. And then if there's a firmware update. You could either do it through the USB or through the Car AV Assist. I recommend doing it through the USB. It's a lot quicker. And then how you would obtain the software is just go on to Pioneer's website. And then you're looking for support. And then you want to match up your model number. Uh, and then also you're going to see what is available and then you just compare it. And if you have a outdated version, then you would just download it onto a USB and then upload it into this radio. So here you have your GPS antennas hooked up, three position, everything seems to be okay here. All right, so that's for the system. And so now let's go into theme. So here you can choose the background. So you can, they have a couple different presets already for the background, or you could actually upload your own as well. Um, you also have illumination. So here you can choose the buttons on the left, what color, and then the clock setting as well. Custom home setting. So here you can grab sources that are not on the bottom. And if you wanted to, let's say, move this down here, here. So you can set this bottom menu however you like. All right. and. Now audio. So you have your fader balance, your loudness, source level adjuster. So from here right now, I'm in CarPlay. So if I wanted to make it louder than the FM level or lower than the FM level so that it's even, so that when I'm switching through sources, it doesn't jump up or go down. And then you have your speaker level. Okay. Um, so opposed to, let's say, using the balance and the fade, let's say the, uh, the driver speaker is too loud. So you would just basically go here and just Pull that down a couple db opposed to using the balance which would take away from one side and give it more to the other so a little more advanced than the, the balance and the fade and then you also have your time alignment okay so if you set that on then what you would want to do is you want to measure from the center of the speaker let's say on the left front to the center of the headrest and then you would put in the measurement there and then you would just do to do that to all the other speakers as well and then on your graphic equalizer, you have a couple presets here. You can choose from powerful, S base, okay, or you can customize it yourself. And then if you want to adjust this, and you would just touch it, and then you can move these up and down as you wish. Okay, and then subwoofer on or off, and then you also have crossovers that you can fully adjust. So let's start with the front, turn it on, and then from here we can adjust the slope and then also the frequency as low as 25 as high as 250 and then the slope that's a subwoofer the slope can be either 24 12 6 and i believe there's an 18 too 18 okay and then also for the rear same thing adjust it however you like and then subwoofer and that is adjustable as high as 250 as low as 25 and then it looks like the slope goes as steep as 36 24 18 12 and then 6. all right and then you have your dynamic bass enhancer on or off subwoofer settings are here phasing low pass so that seems to be the same. I thought maybe they would give you a level. There's no sub level there. But maybe there is a subwoofer level somewhere else. Let's take a look. Just on or off. It's gotta be a way to adjust the subwoofer. I guess it would be here then. So this is gonna be your subwoofer level. All right. And I would set that as a favorite. So if we need to go in there, just speaker level, and then from here you can adjust your subwoofer level. Okay. All right, so that go that takes us through all your audio settings. Now you have your video set up. All right, so you have aux, backup camera, secondary camera, and then on your 
connections. Right now I'm connected to my phone. Bluetooth settings. Okay, so let's do this now. So Wi-Fi settings. All right, so let's go ahead and turn that on. So what you can do is create a hotspot on your phone and then you're able to uh, get internet that way through your hotspot setting. All right, so let's hit search. So we are at the shop and so I'm just gonna go ahead and just grab the Wi-Fi in the shop. Okay, so now that we're done with the settings, let's just go ahead and check this thing out. All right, so from here you can pull this way and this will give you all your sources, all right? And then also you can pull down, give you some suggestions on radio and then you can scroll up and that'll list your favorite radio stations. All right, so let's go ahead and check out CarPlay. All right, so CarPlay looks awesome on this screen. It's big, bright, and bold. You have, of course, all your music apps, all your navigations. So if you use Apple Maps, Google Maps, or Waze, it supports all three of your major navigation apps. You also have all your major music apps. So your Apple Music, Amazon Music, Pandora, Spotify, also iHeartRadio. I think iHeartRadio is a little underrated. I like this because you're able to go in and let's say if you like a hip hop station that's not in your area, you can go and take a listen to what's playing, let's say in New York. So that'd be Hot 97. I know it's here somewhere. Hot 97 for New York. And then my Bay Area people, KMEL. My LA folks, Pi 106. So you're able to go in different regions, which is super dope. Uh, so whether you like hip hop, country, R&B, you can go into different stations throughout the country and you can see what they're listening to. Pretty dope. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at Android Auto now. All right, so this is your main menu. And as you can see, these are the apps that come on Android Auto. So not quite as many as um, Apple CarPlay, but you do have the basics. Of course, you've got your navigation and your music. So let's go to navigation. You can either go to some of your old addresses that you have, or if you want to enter a new one, you just hit the mic button. Directions to 465 North Oxnard Boulevard. 465 North Oxnard Boulevard is one minute from your location by car and light traffic. And one nice thing about Android Auto versus Apple CarPlay is you are able to pinch the screen to either zoom in or zoom out, or you can use these buttons as well. I think the pinch is a lot nicer. So you don't get that on Apple CarPlay, only on Android Auto, at least for now. And then you have your music here, your phone settings, you have Audible, podcasts, weather reports. Currently in Oxnard, it's 70 degrees and cloudy. All right, so that's pretty much it for Android Auto. Okay, so let's check out the browser feature on here. So hit browser. Now right now it's not gonna let me do that because I haven't agreed to the private policy yet and the terms. So let's go here, here's how you do that, go into settings. And then you wanna go here into system, go all the way down and to hit terms of use. And then basically you gotta go here, you gotta scroll down through all these. Just grab the cursor. Okay, then hit yes. And then okay all right now we're good so let's go back browser all right so you also have to download the car AV assist let me show you how to hook that up so the first thing you obviously want to do is download the car AV assist app okay once that's downloaded go ahead and launch it and then you're gonna add a receiver so here it says plus and what I found is that connecting it from a region setting is much better. So go to next, select your region, and then select your radio. Done. Okay, so now I'm gonna hit connect. Okay. And then go to the transfer mode, hit yes, and pair. And okay. So now we're connected. So once you get that icon that comes up with the connect and the car and it's green, you're good to go. All right, so now we're connected. You have your browser here. So from here you 
can go into YouTube. So right now it's hooked to the Wi-Fi network, but if you're tethering off your phone, it may be a little bit slower. And then here are your sports updates that are, you can set up. So you basically pick your favorite team and then it'll give you updates. All right, then you can also go into Google and then so you can type whatever you like here. All right, so what should we look up, so? Uh, sports. All right, sports. All right, so right now it's kind of frozen here. All right, so the browser's not so great. There. All right, there we go. All right, so it's a little delayed. All right, so it is a little, it is a little slow, not quite as responsive. But nevertheless, you can browse the internet. Okay, so this does have Amazon Alexa, which I think is a great feature. So let's go and set this thing up. All right, so let's go ahead and go into our phone. Open that up. All right, to use Alexa, push the talk button. Allow Alexa, yes. Hey Alexa, what's today's weather look like? Right now in Oxnard, it's 68 degrees Fahrenheit with mostly cloudy skies. Throughout the day, you can expect more of the same with a high of 68 degrees and a low of 58 degrees. Enjoy your afternoon. Hey Alexa, what time is sunset? Sunset on Friday, October 9th will be 6.31 p.m. Hey Alexa, play radio station 95.9. Q95.9 from TuneIn. So that's pretty cool. Hey Alexa, order me milk. Great. Free grocery delivery is available to you from Whole Foods. I've added a choice for milk to Josh's Whole Foods cart. Hey Alexa, order me paper towels on Amazon. Based on your order history, I found Pacific Blue Basic Multifold Paper Towels previously branded Acclaim, 16 packs. It's $29.91. With delivery by October 14th, I added it to your Amazon cart for review. To purchase, say buy it now. Nice, so you're able to do ordering all through Alexa through your, your car stereo, pretty awesome feature. All right, so that does it for our overview on this radio. Now, Floney panel screens are extremely hot and in high demand. You do have a lot of brands to choose from though, including Alpine, JVC Kenwood, Sony, and more. Now, I know there's a lot of Pioneer fans out there, and rightfully so. They've made good quality head units for the last several decades, and in my opinion, have led the market when it comes to multimedia head units dating back to the early 2000s with their original AVIC AVH series navigation head units, which were cutting edge at the time, and unlike their competitors, came in different models and price points. And more recently, in 2014, Pioneer was the first aftermarket or OEM stereo manufacturer to release an Apple CarPlay radio with the AVH 4000 NEX, and shortly after that, released software for that radio that supported Android Auto. And they continue to innovate. And I think their commitment to put built-in Amazon Alexa in a lot of their radios is a great move. As voice technology further develops, there'll be higher demand for this feature and other companies are sure to follow. So whether you're a longtime Pioneer fan or this is gonna be your first Pioneer head unit, you will not be disappointed with the purchase of this radio. Okay, so let's go through the pros and cons list. And I'm gonna start with the cons, and although I think they're kind of minor, I'm gonna go in detail with them. And I don't wanna end on a bad note, so we'll knock these out first. But again, I do think they're minor. I just think they could have made the layout a little bit nicer. And I also think with this large of a screen, they could have condensed the audio controls. When adjusting the sound, you do have to jump around to get to where you're going, and the EQ page is not impressive, especially if you compare it to Kenwood or Alpine. Those brands have a better feel and experience when it comes to just those features. If you're seriously considering a floating panel radio, you're gonna to wanna to check out our review on the Kenwood DMX 1037S. And look out for the video on Alpine's 11 inch ILX F411, due to be released fall 2020. AV car assist. All right, so if you remember this, this gives you the ability to set up your screen through your phone via an app. Now, you can do things like sports updates, and it also gives you access to internet pages, including Google, web browsing, and video streaming. But the data transfer is slow, and because we've all gotten used to quick internet and responsiveness, 
I don't think this is a usable feature right now. Maybe in the future if they come up with an update, but personally, I wouldn't count on it. Pioneer has released several apps that have not been met with great reviews. I've used them and had my own issues. And if you read the reviews online, you see what I'm talking about. But most of the great third-party app features that come on this radio come from large companies like Apple, Android, and Amazon, who obviously have larger R&D software budgets and can deliver these great third-party app features. So Pioneer has done an excellent job partnering with these companies and have made integration with these seamless. But hey, browsing the internet in your car is not something we're ready for anyway. Now when cars are more autonomous, then yeah, of course. But until then, Pioneer, you got a little time to develop this. Okay, on to the pros. Wireless CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. Eliminating the need to remember if you have a cable in your car or not. 1080 by 720 HD screen. Bright, bold picture quality. Amazon Alexa. For those of us who have Amazon Alexa at home, now we have it in our car. And I truly believe that voice is going to be big in the very near future. Six channel four volt pre-out, which is pretty standard for a head unit of this caliber, but it's worth mentioning. USB-C input. This is the way of the future. USB-C charges faster and transfers data over much quicker. And if you've recently bought a cutting edge smartphone, you'll notice you didn't get a standard USB cable with it. You got a USB-C cable with it. Pioneer has thought ahead and provided us with a USB-C input. But remember, you do get a USB-C to USB adapter. So if you're not quite ready for the change mentally or emotionally, you still have standard USB options. Mini HDMI input, making it easier to mirror any smartphone, especially iPhone. So for my overall rating, I'm giving this radio a 4.75 star. Excellent radio, all the right features, combined with great sound quality, reliability, and of course, the legendary Pioneer name behind it. If you would like one of these, then click the link in the description below and that'll take you directly to the product page. Remember, we do have easy financing available. So just add to the cart and choose one of our financing options and fill out the form and get approved and we will send this radio out to you ASAP. We are the car stereo shop where you can charge it so you can get this now and make low easy monthly payments. Now if you found this video entertaining or useful in any way, make sure you hit that like button. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.